Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your college football top 25 preview video for week number nine this Saturday, October the 28th. Hey, look, there's only two head to head top 25 matchups. I'm going to dig deep into both of those, but I've got four bonus games for you, four games that were just a bit outside for making the cut. Hey, look, the World Series starts on Friday. I got to get another just a bit outside comment in before the baseball season ends. But once again, six games analyzed in depth. I'm going to give you my database simulation. 10,000 games run through my database. I'll give you the average margin of victory for each game so you can know where the power ratings are. And then we'll dig a little bit deeper and find some situational analysis and see where we can find some value in the card this Saturday. Hey, comment below. Let me know who you like this weekend in college football. Hey, include some analysis as well. I love the analysis. A lot of you are great handicappers. I honestly believe we have the smartest and sharpest sports bettors viewing Wager Talk TV right here on this channel. And don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell for instant alerts. My NFL fade the public video will be up later here on Friday night, heading into the weekend as well on Wager Talk TV. All right, what we do every week is I give you all the head to head top 25 matchups in depth. This week, there's only two of them. It's a kind of a light card for top 25. The SEC is kind of taking a week off here from top 25 action for the most part. Uh, but I do have four bonus games, top 30 ish games, if you will. We'll get to all those in a moment. But let's start with the two true top 25 matchups here for week nine. Saturday, October the 28th. Hey, both go at 3.30 Eastern. It's a loaded card this afternoon at 3.30 Eastern on Saturday. Number eight, Oregon at number 13, Utah. In my opinion, the best game of the week on Fox at 3.30 Eastern. And these are two play-on teams for me this season. And my database simulation is like both of them quite often. In this game, it favors Utah. The reason being that it has Oregon on average winning by just four points. And the current line on Thursday afternoon, as we check the Wager Talk live odd screen, is six and a half across the board. So obviously, if we get up to that key number of seven, I would definitely like Utah even more. I do think there's some line value here with Utah. And I run other, by the way, other simulations, other projections uh, through different metrics. And uh, several of them also have Utah winning the game outright. And several of the other uh, simulations I run have Utah quite often winning the yardage battle. So this is the definition of a live dog. And they also have a legitimate revenge motive on top of that. Uh, so I do like Utah here at plus six and a half. Would like them even more if we can get to that key number of plus seven. Now, there's always concerns. There's no slam dunks. I know basketball season has started, uh, but there's no slam dunks in any sport as far as betting goes. And the one concern here, you do have to worry about Utah's mindset um, after the 34-32 upset at UC USC last week as a seven-point road dog, another top 25 matchup that we talked about here in the video. Um, USC was coming off the Notre Dame loss, and I think the ha hangover lingered. Uh, they were just terrible once again on defense. They've been bad on defense all season. Uh, but a mediocre, below-average Utah offense that has struggled without their starting quarterback all season uh, put up over 470 total yards and 34 points. Don't think they're going to have as much success against a really good Oregon defense that's given up just 17 points a game. And Oregon's passing D has been excellent this year, just six yards per pass allowed. But they've been very mediocre against the run, and that's how Utah's going to have to approach this game. So I do think Utah matches up okay against that strong Oregon D as Utah's strength is running the ball with the backup quarterback. Uh, so I do like Utah in this game based on line value. A little worried about the letdown, but at home in the thin air and altitude, I think they'll come to play here. Oregon's a really good team. Their only loss, obviously, was at the buzzer. Now the buzzer. Basketball's on my mind. At the end, the missed field goal, losing by three as a three-point dog at Washington a couple weeks ago, number seven versus number eight. Uh, so Oregon's done nothing wrong. They're still in the national title contention with that one loss. But this is a dangerous spot for them here. We'll see how it plays out. But once again, uh, my simulation has Oregon winning by just four points on Saturday afternoon at Utah. All right, there's one other true top 25 head-to-head -head matchup this week, also at 3.30 Eastern on Saturday afternoon, and that is number 20 Duke at number 18 Louisville on ESPN National TV. And a lot of uncertainty once again, just like last week when I previewed the Duke-Florida State game here on the channel. I told you uh, star quarterback uh, for Duke, obviously, Riley Leonard, was questionable. He'd missed a couple games with the high ankle sprain. Well, he came back and played, and boy, did he play well. Duke was winning outright, looking like they were going to win outright as a two-touchdown dog until the ankle injury came back late in the second half, and uh, Florida State goes 21-0 in the fourth quarter to win the game. Uh, you do have to really worry about Duke's mindset now after their second loss of the season. Uh, first loss was a late loss against Notre Dame. Duke was still in national title contention, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, because Notre Dame drove the length of the field with a couple minutes to go to win that game a few weeks earlier. Um, Duke looked like they could pull the upset last week. They give up the 21 straight on answer to blow that 2017 lead and end up losing by 18. Didn't even cover as a two-touchdown dog. 
bad beat to say the least if you had Duke last week because they were in a position to win outright until the quarterback went down. Leonard is questionable this week, and I personally think if he plays, which is a big if, uh, he will not be as effective. These high ankle sprains take three to four weeks to heal on average. Um, he'd sat out a few weeks, looked better last week, and then he re-injured it. No way he is fully healthy. I don't even know if he's going to go this week. Uh, so a lot of uncertainty here. Let's look at the database simulation. Um, on the surface, you can make an argument there's some value with Duke. Uh, currently, they're about a four-point dog here with the uncertainty of quarterback. Database simulation only favors Louisville by two, but once again, that would be a full-season simulation with Leonard healthy. Uh, that's why we don't just go on the numbers. It's a starting point. I say the same thing with my NFL Fade the Public video, right? We use it as a filter. It's a factor. One of the many aspects we use when handicapping. We start off Louisville by two on average is where I have the database simulation. We check the Wager Talk Live odd screen. We're seeing them mostly as a four and a half point favorite now. Open four now. It's up to four and a half. Uh, just too much uncertainty for me right now. If Leonard was fully healthy, I would really like Duke in this game, but I just don't think that's going to be the case. All right, those are the two true top 25 matchups here for week number nine, Saturday, October the 28th. Going to get to four bonus games, top 30-ish games here in just a moment for you. But I want to let you know, now is the time to be an all-sports, all-access client at wagertalk.com. Uh, not only am I crushing it in football, hey, look, we're talking college football right now, uh, but NFL has been on a monster run as well. 20 and 9 NFL sides run over the past couple months. And it should be no surprise, last year, college and pro football combined on sides, I was number one ranked at Wager Talk, 97 and 72, up over 64 and a half units. NBA, the last two seasons combined on sides, up over 160 units. And since 2023 began, January 1st this calendar year, NBA is 78 and 48. And that's because I cashed an easy 23 point winner on Wednesday night with my first best bet on the Pacers over the Wizards. NBA is a fantastic sport to bet. I know many of you might not watch it, don't care about it. I personally don't care about the regular season. I, I watch it for information, but it's a terrible product during the regular season. I get it, but it doesn't matter. It's such a great sport to bet and make money, and my record speaks for itself. Once again, up 20 net games already in 2023 in the NBA. College and pro football sides, number one last year. NBA sides, number one the past two years combined. Oh, by the way, baseball, 62%. Since September 1st, World Series starts on Friday and this weekend. Now is the time to be an all sports, all access client. And I have special promo codes for a three day, a 67 day. What's that mean? The rest of the calendar year. That's why it's 67 days through December 31st, or a full year, 365 days for as low as $3 a day. Pick the package that works best for you, no matter which option you choose a three day sampler, the rest of 2023, or the full one year special. You get a special discounted price right now, and I've got the promo codes posted. Go check out my page, along with some bonus free plays. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker, wt.buzz slash sm. All right, I gave you the two head-to-head -head top 25 matchups for week nine. Let's look at four bonus games. Now, this one barely missed the cut because we've got number one Georgia against number 26 Florida. Florida is the first team out on both the coaches' poll and the AP poll. So needless to say, if they pull the upset this week, they will definitely be ranked next week. Uh, I don't think that happens, though. Uh, this game, by the way, also at 3.30 Eastern on CBS. Biggest cocktail party, whatever the nickname used to be. I don't think we're allowed to say that anymore. We can't say Red River Shootout. It's Red River Rivalry. We can't say the world's greatest cocktail party, even. I'm not quite sure why we can't say that. Nothing's wrong with a good cocktail. Hey, by the way, comments below. Let me know your favorite cocktail this weekend when you're watching college football. All seriousness, though, let's look at this database simulation and what is a big game uh, for both teams. And first of all, uh, Georgia's 7-0 on the season, 1-5-1 and against the spread. They have only covered once all year. Of course, that was a couple games back where they blew out Kentucky. I mentioned it here on the Top 25 video. I used it, Georgia as a strong best bet for my personal clients. Only time all season I've used Georgia, so I'm 1-0 with them. Otherwise, they've gone 1-5-1 and against the spread. But I picked my spot, and one of the reasons I really liked them against Kentucky, as you remember a few weeks ago, as I said on the video, is that we were getting a discounted price with them. Um, I made that line almost three touchdowns. They were laying just two touchdowns. Rare opportunity to get the number one team in the country at a discounted price. But the fact that Georgia is struggling to cover, that has become the case. So let's look at the database simulation this week and see if we're getting Georgia at a discount once again. Well, currently, as I check the Wager Talk Live odds screen on Thursday afternoon as I do this video, Georgia is a 14 and a half point favorite across the board. It opened 14 and a half. It has not moved. And guess what? My database simulation, 14.4. So it's spot on. Um, if the line drops to 14 or less, I think you could start making a case of some value uh, with Georgia in what should be a focused spotlight game. Uh, Florida also throws the ball well, so there is some backdoor cover potential there. But Georgia has a really strong pass D. 
Uh, the difference in this game, though, is the Georgia defense. Huge edge, 14 points allowed, 4.4 yards per play. Florida's given up almost six yards per play. So Georgia's the better team. I do see them winning this game. But at 14 and a half, it's spot on with my simulation. Uh, that game, once again, at 3.30 Eastern on Saturday. All right, that game just missed the top 25. The other three I had to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, but I love to give you all bonus content. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you all watching. So my goal with all these videos, of course, is to give you as much information as content as possible, especially for those of you doing your own handicapping, as I know many of you, if not all of you probably are, if you're watching this video, and I get it. Uh, number 21, Tennessee at number 34, Kentucky. Now, when I say number 34, what I do is I look at the additional votes in the AP poll. And right now, Kentucky's barely getting any. They're hanging on by a thread, um, but they do qualify with some additional votes there. Um, two additional votes which ranks them 34th overall. So definitely digging deep here. Um, I did a solo video on this game earlier in the week on Monday. And by the way, check out all the solo videos for all the top 25 college games, plus every NFL game and even daily NBA games. I'm doing some NBA games on a daily basis as well. So check out Wager Talk TV. Yet another reason, hit subscribe and that bell for instant alerts. So if you'd like a deep dive in this game, go back and check my five-minute solo video. I uh, didn't have the database simulation ready yet on Monday. It takes several days to run the 10,000 games. Um, but I do have it for you now, so I wanted to give a little update on this game. Uh, simulation favors Tennessee by five and a half points in this one, and they are currently only about a three and a half point favor. That line opened three and a half, and it's held steady at three and a half, has not moved all week. So obviously, if it drops down to the key number of three or less, there is some line value with Tennessee. My concern, though, as I mentioned earlier in my video this week, is that they're coming off the Alabama loss. First of all, it's their second loss of the season, which could be a real bubble burster. And then on top of that, it's Alabama, always a physical opponent. But Tennessee looked pretty good. Uh, Yardage-wise, they moved the ball well in that game. Uh, Kentucky, though, good scheduling edge for them here. Tennessee might be fatigued and hung over, whereas Kentucky had the bye week. I mentioned that tough loss to Georgia. Well, they definitely were hung over after that. They lost by 17 to Missouri the following week, but they got the bye. So it looks like a good situational setup for Kentucky, but the line value favors Tennessee as my simulation has them winning by five and a half. And oh, by the way, if you didn't watch that video or if you don't go back and watch it, uh, my recommendation on Monday was actually under 51 and a half. And that does still hold is this number sitting at 51 and a half. 51 is a very key total, but a three to 4% chance this game lands exactly on 51. So 51 and a half or more, I still think there's some undervalue uh, with Tennessee and Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky, a run-based offense that doesn't throw the ball well. And Tennessee has been very good defensively this year, just four and a half yards per play allowed. All right, two other games. And once again, digging kind of deep here. So we're going to go to the other two teams that are getting one vote. That's right, one vote and the additional votes of the AP, which makes them 35th overall. First, let's talk about Wisconsin, 35th, but they are playing a big-time opponent here in number three, Ohio State, at Wisconsin, 7.30 Eastern Saturday night on NBC. And first of all, this is a dangerous spot for Ohio State. That's another reason I wanted to talk about it here on the video. They're coming off a huge win against Penn State. I gave you Ohio State last week here in this video for free. I also use them as a strong best bet for my personal clients. I like the spot for Ohio State. My simulation favored them by nine. They're only a four, four and a half point favorite against Penn State. And I also liked fading Penn State, who beats up on teams as a favorite, but struggles as a dog. James Franklin has that MO now, and it held up again last week. So that was an impressive win by Ohio State. But you do have to worry about a road trip now against a dangerous Wisconsin team. And by the way, I'm not going to say they have a look ahead at Rutgers next week. Uh, but Rutgers also received an additional vote, so we might squeeze that into the video next week, Rutgers, Ohio State. But in the meantime, Wisconsin matches up okay as a good defensive dog here, but they got to keep the game close. One thing they're not going to be able to do is play from behind because they do not throw the ball well, and that's obviously a concern. If Wisconsin gets down by a couple scores, uh, it's lights out, and Ohio State probably pulls away in this game. Uh, currently, as we check the live odd screen at wagertalk.com, uh, this line has held pretty steady all week. It opened 14, got up to 14.5, and, and it's holding – as of Thursday afternoon, 14 and a half across the board. Uh, my database simulation, 10,000 games run through the database, has Ohio State winning on average by just 13 points. So at 14 and a half or more, there is some line value over that key number with Wisconsin. And as I mentioned, I think you can make a case this is a potential flat spot for Ohio State. My concern, of course, though, is if Wisconsin gets behind, they're not going to be able to catch up. But a really good pass defense um, should be able to slow down Ohio State. Wisconsin's allowing just 18 and a half points a game and just 15 points at home. They're getting 14 and a half now. So somewhat of a live dog here. And I do think there's a little bit of value based on my simulation with the Wisconsin Badgers Saturday night, 730 Eastern on NBC. All right, I dug deep. Wisconsin was getting just one additional vote. So I had to include the other team, 
uh, for our producer, Eric, who does these videos each week. And by the way, give some love for Eric in the comments below. Let him know what a great job he does producing these videos. He does both the college top 25 here and my NFL fade the public. And he's a UNLV guy. So I had to include UNLV, number 35 UNLV, who's getting one vote in the additional poll. And Fresno is currently 30th, getting eight additional votes. So I know I'm digging deep, but it is a fun game to talk about. Let's get to some statistical facts for you. First of all, it is the first time in 20 years since 2003 that UNLV is receiving votes in both major polls. As I said, they got one vote in the AP. And uh, look out, they're getting six votes in the coaches' poll. A little bit more love there. And um, it's also the first time uh, they'll be going bowling in 10 years since 2013. They're already bowl eligible at 6-1 and one after last week's win against Colorado State. But my favorite fact of all, it's also the first time in 39 years since Randall Cunningham was quarterback that UNLV has started 6-1. and one. And for those of you that are not as old as I am in their 40s, almost 50s, do you even know who Randall Cunningham was? Google him. He was the first versatile quarterback back in the 1980s. And as a fan of the Washington Redskins, I remember watching him play in many games at home. And boy, could he move 39 years since UNLV has started 6-1. and one. So we got to talk about the running Rebels. Unfortunately, this is a difficult game to handicap because Fresno State, just like Duke, Fresno State starting quarterback is listed as questionable. Mikey, Mikey Keene is questionable. We don't know for sure if he's going to go yet. Uh, Tefford said that he's okay with the backup quarterback, Logan Fife, but he's only thrown 53 attempts. Um, Keene has 30, 232 passing attempts this year. And the other reason I bring that up is because matchup-wise, it's very important. UNLV's weakness this year has been a bad pass defense. They're getting up eight and a half yards of pass over nine yards per pass on the road. Um, Fresno throws the ball well, but they do not run the ball well. So we really need the information on the quarterback. This is a late game at 10.30 Eastern on Fox Sports 1. It's one of the late games Saturday night. So let's keep a closer eye on this game as we head into the weekend and find out if the Fresno quarterback is a go or not. Um, if he is a go here, uh, maybe we get some line value because uh, first of all, my database simulation, 10,000 games run through the database, once again, favors a Fresno State by 12 points. As we check the Wager Talk live odds screen currently on Thursday afternoon, Fresno is only a seven and a half point favorite, but I think a couple points of uncertainty is built in. If the quarterback is a go, it probably gets up to nine, maybe that key number at 10, but there would still be some value as I favor Fresno by 12. But once again, with the starting quarterback, Mikey King, questionable, really difficult to handicap this game until we get closer to the weekend, but still a fun game to talk about. Uh, UNLB is doing some good things out there in the desert. We'll see how this one plays out in a battle of six and one teams on Saturday night. All right, I dug deep on those last two, obviously, giving you two teams that had one vote in the top 35, but I wanted to give you as much content as possible. If you appreciate it, if you found it useful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up, a like, and also leave me comments. I read all the comments. I reply back. I love the support. Let me know your thoughts on these games, the six games I talked about here in the top 35, if you will, but also let me know other games, maybe some under-the-radar games. I know many of you do extremely well with the Sun Belt, with the Mac, some of the smaller conferences. Let me know some value there. Give some analysis as well. I love reading your thoughts. Your insight is fantastic. And let's win together here on Wager Talk TV. Hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. And make sure you hit that bell for instant alerts when not only this video goes live each week, but also my NFL Fade the Public video is up over the next day or so. And congratulations to Wager Talk TV. And thank you to all of you that have hit subscribe. We hit 130,000 subscribers this week. Let's keep it growing. Next goal, 150,000 subscribers. So hit subscribe if you haven't done so. And hit that bell. For instant alerts. And one final note on the way out this is the best time of year to be an all sports, all access client at wagertalk.com. And the proof is in the pudding. Got off to a fantastic start on Wednesday with my first NBA best bet of the season, an easy 23 point steamroll to blow out with a five point favorite. And that brings us now to 78 and 48 since January 1st, this calendar year in the NBA. And over the past two years plus now, up over 162 units on NBA sides alone. Last year, number one ranked in college and pro football sides. NFL, I know we're talking college football, NFL on a 20 and 9 sides run over the past couple months. Huge NFL card this Sunday. I love this Saturday college football card. What a great time to try a three day all access for just 49. It's an instant $20 discount with promo code ACCESS3 if you want to try the three day sampler. We also have a rest of 2023 special, no promo code needed. It's on my page right now, works out to just $7 a day or the best deal, the one-year special with an instant $800 discount with promo code SM365. That works out to just over $3 a day. Hey, no need to rewind this or memorize the codes. They're all on my homepage right now. So go there and figure out which package works best for you. But whatever you do, don't miss out on a huge Saturday and Sunday college and pro football card. 
NBA here on a daily basis and the World Series this weekend as well. What a great time to be an all sports, all access subscriber at wagertalk.com and pick out the promo code in the package that works best for you on my homepage, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut code WT.buzz slash SM. Hey, follow me on Twitter as well at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L. And hey, I'm on Instagram now. Who knew? I didn't even know. Merrill Steve on Instagram. And uh, my producer, Eric, here, once again, helping me out with that, as well as Kelly in Vegas. So appreciate all the support. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. And don't forget to check back soon here on Wager Talk TV for NFL Fade the Public. Until then, enjoy the games. Best of luck. And I'll talk to you again soon right here on Wager Talk TV.